Hi everyone, if you are just joining me, my name is Dr. Mary Claire Haver and I am here today to discuss menopausal belly fat, how we gain it and what we can do about it. And forgive me if you see my eyes floating around. I have notes. I'm also on two different platforms right now going live, both on my Facebook group at the Galveston Diet and on TikTok at Dr. Mary Claire Haver. As always, I'll try to leave some time for questions at the end. So just put your <clears throat> questions in the comments and I'll try to get to them at the end. So if you don't know me or you're just joining me, my name is Dr. Mary Claire Haver. I am a board certified obstetrician gynecologist. I practice menopause care and outside of Houston, Texas. I'm also certified in culinary medicine from Tulane University, which makes me a nutritionist of sorts. I have extensive background now in um, nutrition and nutrition science, as well as medicine and OBGYN. And I've married my passions of women's health, menopause, and <clears throat> nutrition into my program the Galveston diet so today I am coming on live to talk about menopausal belly fat this is almost universal complaint that I have for my patients and thousands and thousands millions of followers who reach out to me about frustrations with their own uh, body composition changes and weight gain associated with midlife and menopause so what is belly fat? So I want to be very specific about when we talk about belly fat that we're all on the same page. So there are multiple types of fat in the body, but the two compartments I'm talking about are subcutaneous fat and visceral fat. Subcutaneous fat is the fat that we all know. It's the fat under our skin. It's what gives us curves. It's how we can pinch an inch. It is what is most likely linked to an overabundance of calories. Calories in, calories out, this is where the fat storage comes from. The interesting thing about subcutaneous fat is it can be cosmetically distressing, especially for women, no one's gonna deny that. Um, now that we're a little more accepting of different body types, it's not as distressing. When I was a kid, there was one body type that was attractive and if you didn't have that exact body, you know, good luck to you, but it's the excessive accumulation of subcutaneous fat can lead to wear and tear in your joints and that is dangerous, but it's not really metabolically active. It does not lead to increasing risk of a lot of chronic diseases. Visceral fat is different. Visceral fat is intra-abdominal fat. This is the fat that is under the muscle that wraps around our internal organs. Quite often it will give you a, you almost look pregnant if you're a woman or the classic beer belly in a man. Um, this is fat that will push the abdomen out and you can't really pinch it. A lot of people with visceral fat will have a hard abdomen. And we know that women within two years of their period stopping will start seeing a dramatic increase in visceral fat, leading to a change in their body composition and where they store fat. Where they used to store fat among about the hips and thighs, they are now starting to shift it to store it intra-abdominally. And this is almost universal. Uh, there's very few patients that I have who can escape this happening to some degree. Almost 100% will come in complaining of it, even if they are normal weight of some degree, that they're having an increase of their abdomen and nowhere else in their body. They've stopped gaining weight where they used to and now they're gaining weight in the belly cavity. So why does this happen? Everybody wants to know, why does this happen? Why does this happen? Well, there's definitely a big hormonal shift here. And I'm not just talking about our sex hormones, which are estrogen, testosterone, progesterone, and their derivatives. I'm also talking about hormones like insulin, leptin, ghrelin, PP, hormone PPY. There's several hormones that control not only where and how we store fat, but also control our hunger and our satiety. So when we're full or when we're hungry, those are all hormonally driven and not so much driven by calories in, calories out. These are driven by the quality of the food that we are eating. So specifically for women, why we see the sudden acceleration tied to when the ovaries begin to shut down is very, very interesting. And it's a little bit of a complicated endocrinological tale, but just stay with me. So <clears throat> remember, 
when we are having normal cycles, um, normal for you, except if you're PCOS, you start dealing with belly fat much earlier. If you have normal monthly menstrual cycles, you, you know, there's no such thing as balancing your hormones. That's a marketing term, not a medical term. Your estrogen levels fluctuate throughout the month. They peak mid-cycle and then they go back down. And then progesterone peaks at the end of the cycle and goes back down um, under the influence of other hormones from the hypothalamus and pituitary called LH and FSH. Okay, that being said, estrogen is what causes our liver to create a protein called steroid hormone binding globulin, SHBG. When estrogen levels begin to overall decrease in perimenopause, your hormone binding globulin decreases. This is what binds our sex hormones, estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone, and their derivatives, and keep and keep it bound and inactive. So even though you may have normal testosterone levels, they may not be very active because of the high binding amount. As that binding globulin drops, the activity of these hormones increases so that androgens or the testosterone derived and, and its derivatives will increase the body's preference to drive more fat to the abdomen. Visceral fat is dangerous. Visceral fat is linked to diabetes, hypertension, stroke, even if you're normal weight, even if your BMI is normal. If you have elevated levels of visceral fat, you are at risk for seven of the top 10 leading causes of death, all related to chronic inflammation. The more visceral fat you have, the more, and that visceral fat is also an inflammatory cytokine factory. It creates inflammation. And the higher your inflammation levels are, the more fat you drive to the abdomen. You end up in this horrible negative feedback cycle. Estrogen levels are declining, androgen activity is increasing. As your inflammation levels go up due to all of this, your insulin resistance, so your insulin levels rise, which is gonna drive more fat to the abdomen, and on and on and on. You end up in a horrible negative feedback cycle. So what I walk my patients through in clinic and with the Galveston diet is what can we do to reverse this process? And let me be honest with you. If you're looking for a magic potion or a quick fix, find another physician that is not me i do not have one thing that you can do without changing your life that is going to reverse this process what i can tell you is there are several things that you can do that can work synergistically together to help stop this process and not only get rid of the visceral fat or help decrease it but improve your quality of life and your overall health statistics so what can we do? These are all science-based, evidence-based, and a lot of these studies were done in menopausal women, okay? So what can we do, what can we do, what can we do? All right, so number one, make sure, you're, and you've watched me before, you've heard me say this, make sure you are getting enough fiber. Make sure you're getting enough fiber. All right, my big followers out there, let me see some comments below. How much fiber do we need? Minimum for a woman per day. How much fiber do we need? Let me see it in the comments. Um, both Facebook and TikTok. You guys should know this answer. I talk about this all the time. I see some hmms. How much fiber do we need? 25, you're right. Minimum, ladies, a minimum of 25 grams of fiber. I believe it's 32 grams for a male per day. And the average American is only getting about 50% of that per day in their diet. So if you go to my blog at galvestondiet.com, Facebook, you can just Google Galveston Diet Blogs. TikTok, it's linked. Um, if you go to Dr. Mary Claire up here, you can click um, the link up there and um, you'll see my link in bio at the top of the page and the blogs are all there. So I have a blog called the Fabulous Four Challenge. That is what the Women's World article came out was about this challenge. It was TikTok viral, millions of views. I've had millions and millions of people contact me about it. Thank you for following me, everyone. This is amazing. I really appreciate it. So. That blog has all of this information in there. So fiber, good sources of fiber. Berries, legumes, which are basically, um, which are going to be basically peas, peanuts, beans, you know, super high in fiber. Things like chia seeds, things like flax seeds, things like other nuts, all super fruits and vegetables, all rich in fiber. I wanna see in the comments your favorite sources of fiber. and. Facebook and TikTok, I'm getting notifications. If you wouldn't mind, 
um, just give me a like or a share or a follow. Um, this helps drive these algorithms and keeps me relevant on this platform. Facebook, um, I mean, Facebook, you'll see the like button down below. TikTok, you just take my, take your, um, take your, just tap my face. Tap my face 10 times and that will send me a bunch of likes and that will help drive. Thank you for following. Thank you for sharing. All right, I'm seeing beans. Chia pudding, excellent. Fruits and nuts. Dr. MC Broccoli. <laughs> Um, hummus, flax and berries, chickpeas, chickpeas, oatmeal. Yes, oats are very high in fiber. Flax, well, okay, so you guys are nailing this. Diets rich in fiber, people who have diets rich in fiber have decreased amounts of visceral fat. So if you are looking for, full disclosure, I do sell some of these products. So um, if you're looking for a fiber supplement, remember, as a nutritionist, the bulk of your nutrition should come from food, okay? You should do everything in your power to get these nutrients from food. If that is not possible, you could consider supplementation. If you have limited access to certain products, if you have allergies or intolerances, that is when supplementation can be helpful. So Galveston Diet, we do have a wonderful fiber supplement. It is a mix of soluble and insoluble fiber. It's psyllium husk with several different grains involved. I wanted to have fiber from several different sources in our fiber in our fiber supplement. You can go and check that out. Again, link in bio um, on, on TikTok or on Facebook. You can just um, go to galvesondiet.com and check out our supplement page if you're interested in learning more. Okay, so number one, fiber. Number two, added sugars. Added sugars, added sugars, added sugars. Added sugars are the sugars added in cooking and processing. Those of you who have been in the keto world, this is going to blow your mind, okay? Ain't nobody gets fat eating fruits and vegetables. This is what my nutrition professor taught me. First day, first thing. Ain't nobody gets fat eating fruit and vegetables, okay? Added sugars are the sugars added in cooking and processing, okay? So not fruits, not natural sugars, not vegetables. Things like high fructose corn syrup, agave, honey, okay? You should have no more than 25 grams of added sugars per day. 25 grams of added sugars per day. Table sugar, what it, it is in all, almost all processed products. Guys, you have to be careful. You've got to read those labels. You've got to track. If you're looking for a good tracker, again, go to my link in bio or go to the Galveston Diet page. We have a partnership with, um, you can do it for free with Chronometer, my favorite tracking app in the world. They have the most up-to-date database you could ever, ever imagine. So, um, so numerous studies have indicated that excess sugar, mostly due to large amounts of fructose, like high fructose corn syrup, can lead to fat building up around your lower abdomen and liver. It's one of the biggest causes of fatty liver disease, not fat ingestion, fructose injection, ingestion, usually in the form of high fructose corn syrup. Fructose, sugar, table sugar is half glucose and half fructose, okay? Your liver must process fructose and it can only do a certain amount at a time. And once it's, once that machinery slows down, it is forced to convert that fructose to fat for storage before it can be burned, okay? So, um, it is sugary drinks are the devil are the worst. I mean, if, if I can make one recommendation to you is if you drink any sugar laden beverages, any sweetened beverages to stop and just drink water, that will probably be the biggest impact on your health that I could possibly make. Studies have shown that children are 60% more likely to develop obesity with each additional daily serving of a sugar sweetened beverage. So Kool-Aid, sodas, all the stuff we're giving our kids, guys. Minimizing, so, you know, I'm not saying never have any sugar, but you should be picky about your sweeteners and where they come from and what you're putting them in. So we talked about fiber and we talked about added sugar. Oh my God, we have 26,000 likes, you guys. Thank you so much. Um, remember, questions in the comments and we'll get to them at the end. Um, okay, none of this applies to whole fruit. Whole fruit does not count here. We're talking about added sugars, added sugars in cooking and processing. Oh God, you guys are killing me. We're at 28,000 likes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, number three. Ladies, eating a diet rich in probiotics. You are restocking the gut pond every time you eat something with probiotics. I'm talking, what's your favorite probiotic food? 
down below. I am talking about yogurt. Now you can take healthy yogurt and make it pretty unhealthy, okay? As long as you don't have an allergy to, to the milk protein or any kind of dairy intolerance, yogurt is very, very healthy when it's plain the way God made it instead of adding all kind of crap to it. I add my stuff to the yogurt. I get plain yogurt. I have no dairy intolerances whatsoever. If you have a dairy intolerance, you should know it by now. Do not eat it, okay? But this is a great source of probiotics. Also kimchi, also miso, also Chinese pickles, things that are fermented, kombucha, are all great sources. If you can't get access to those or can't do dairy, you may want to consider a probiotic supplement. Now, it's there's a million out there. How do you pick which one? Okay, when you look at, you have to do your own research here, okay? Re or do search, as I used to say. So you've got to make sure that the company you're going with has third-party testing because the FDA is not regulating food supplements. Kefir is another one, you're right. The FDA, again, is not regulating food supplements. So you have to make sure that you're doing due diligence for you put something in your body and you know that it has third-party testing. You should go for at least a billion. Billions are better, okay? You want a lot because a lot is lost in the digestive process. So you need a lot to start with. The one I take is from Garden of Life. I do not, no sponsorship, I make no money. And it's the 80 billion women's raw. That's what I take. Um, I got every MLM in town selling probiotics, trying to get me to sell theirs. I'm not doing it, stop asking. So I just go to the health food store in Galveston and I go get my, at Peak Nutrition right down the road, and I get uh, probiotics from there. Billions, billions with a B, billions with a B. Um, so that's the one I get. If anybody else has one that they love, go ahead and drop it in the comments below. Um, and I do 80 billion, I do a lot. So, um, okay, so probiotics, aerobic exercise, aerobic exercise has been linked to decrease visceral fat. Not so much because of fat burning, though we you know, not so much because of calories in, calories out, more for what it does, exercise does for your insulin levels. Insulin drives fat to the abdomen, guys. So lowering your fasting insulin, lowering your between meal insulin, keeping those levels stable, exercise will do that, go a long way with that. Burn, and so it's gonna be cardio more, I, I can't express how much it is important for you to do both cardio and resistance training. They're both important, but right now we're just talking about cardio. I tell my patients to try to stay in zone two, which is, you know, basically 60, 60 to 65, 70, 75% of, you know, a range of your max heart rate. Max heart rate can be calculated multiple ways. You can Google it. For me, it's about 120 beats per minute. So I try to do about 30 minutes of cardio five days a week, or maybe 45, four days a week, you know, somewhere around two to three hours a week of cardio in zone two. I put on Netflix, I do work, I do meetings. Um, that for me is my maximum fat burning zone and that is helping to keep the visceral fat at bay. Okay, the next one is make sure that you are getting enough protein, enough protein in your diet. How much protein, Dr. Haver? Well, it depends, okay? It depends. Protein is a very important macronutrient for weight loss and I'll tell you most women, when I was in nutrition class, most women in this country are not getting nearly enough and they're, they're basically they're having something like toast or some kind of a carby thing for breakfast and then lunch they're having a salad with very little protein and then they're stacking their protein at dinner. Here's the thing, first important thing to remember about protein. Ladies, our bodies can only process maybe 30 grams in a sitting. You need to divide that protein out throughout all your meals and snacks. You should not stack it up for the big steak or big piece of chicken or whatever at dinner. You need to be feeding that body protein for multiple reasons. One, it's gonna get converted to fat if you eat too much in one sitting. Two, that protein affects insulin and ghrelin dramatically. Having adequate amounts of protein throughout the day will keep those, those hormones that are controlling your hunger and your satiety at bay. Okay, um, so if you're a vegan or vegetarian, you have to work hard at this. 
This is hard. It is harder for you to get the amount of protein. You may need to supplement. I do not have a supplement of protein that I recommend. We don't, you know, if you're vegan or vegetarian, we try to give you individualized counseling in the Galveston diet. Um, we have vegan and vegetarian options in Galveston diet, but you really have to be focused and conscientious and really load up on your lentils <laughs> when you are um, a vegan or vegetarian. I do not recommend one meal a day. I don't. I do not. Um, okay. Okay. Let's see. Um, okay, so we covered fiber, we covered protein, we covered probiotics, we covered uh, cardiovascular exercise, and then um, we, so, oh, how much protein? How much protein, how much protein? Okay, so basically, adequate protein is somewhere around one to 1.5, grams for every kilogram of lean body mass. One to 1.5 grams for every kilogram of lean body mass for women, okay? So for my patients, I figure that out for them and it's usually somewhere in the 70 to maybe 100 range, depending on the patient and how much muscle mass she has and what her basal metabolic rate. I'm able to do that in clinic for my patients. I have special machines to help me measure that. So. If you're doing a back of the envelope, basically what's your goal weight? At what gate weight were you rocking the bod? Okay, or what is your like, if I could have that body back, I would be perfect, okay? Take that weight and divide it by 2.2 to get the kilograms. That pretty much is a reasonable number to start with. Then multiply that number by one to 1.5 for how much protein you should be getting a day. So if you weigh 50, kilog 50 kilograms, which is 120-ish pounds, is your goal weight, okay? then that's gonna be uh, 50 to 75, that's low, 50 to 75 kilograms, uh, grams, sorry, of protein per day. And you need to divide that out um, amongst your meals and snacks. So if your goal is 80 grams of protein per day, let's just pretend, whatever that turns out to be, you should probably be having, you know, 20 grams of protein with breakfast, 15 with a snack, maybe 30 with lunch, you know, you gotta divide it out throughout all your meals and snacks. So I see some questions on here. Now here's another thing that will help decrease visceral fat. It's not great for weight loss, but it has been shown to decrease visceral fat versus people who don't do this. And this is called intermittent fasting. Okay, now there are 1 million ways to intermittent fast because there are multiple, you know, minutes in a day. What we teach in the Galveston diet is intermittent fasting as a 16-8. It's a daily habit of fasting for about 16 hours and eating in an eight hour window. Now, fasting is not for everyone. If you're diabetic, if you have, you know, eating disorders, not everyone can fast. So, you know, the beautiful thing about Galveston diet is we have multiple ways to approach nutrition. There are three big components of the program and you don't have to do each one perfectly. It doesn't mean it's, you're not gonna get healthier if you can't fat, if you're not a faster, if that's not gonna work for you. If you have hypoglycemia, you can't go that long without food. So um, now you can overdo fasting. People who are doing these extreme fasts or one meal a day, you know, I have not seen data in menopausal women that show that that is effective or helpful. Um, so, and it, you know, studies are showing it's not great for overall weight loss. You can eat a lot of pro-inflammatory foods in your fasting window and kind of undo the anti-inflammatory benefits of fasting. Um, we recommend fasting to take about five weeks to become fast adapted. This is a very slow process. This is not something you should jump into, not something you should do overnight. Um, all right, everybody, if you're just joining me, I am Dr. Mary Claire Haver. I am a board certified OBGYN physician. I'm also certified in culinary medicine from Tulane University. I've married my passions of nutrition and women's health into the Galveston diet. You can learn more at our um, page up here at Dr. Mary Claire or at, um, on Facebook, if you're following me on Facebook, you can check it out at um, galvestondiet.com. 
and learn more about it. And so everybody take a second, I'm gonna switch over to Facebook real quick and um, go ahead and give me some likes. This helps and thank you on TikTokers, you just tap my face like this, take your finger and tap my face and you just tap the screen and that will generate likes. That helps drive the algorithm to keep me relevant on this platform. Um, so I'm gonna try to get to some questions and see, give me one second so I can see them. Okay. Uh, Let's see, thanks y'all, lots of questions. Okay, can, um, and so if you are on TikTok, go ahead and put your questions in the comments and I will try to get to some, I see lots of comments. Okay, um, what do you know about monk fruit? Is it a sweet, safe sweetener? So there are synthetic sweeteners, the old saccharin and the equal and the um, aspartame. Uh, those are not considered to be your in your best interest. They do they can disrupt the gut microbiota. They cause a lot of problems. The um, natural sweeteners, things like monk fruit and stevia, are considered to be a lot safer. We don't use them in the Galveston diet when we're fasting. We only use the monk fruit and stevia when we break our fast um, because of the potential that there are uh, sweet receptors on your tongue and those sweeteners can stimulate that and it may cause a release of insulin and everything we do is to try to stabilize our insulin levels so we don't want to undermine that process um let's see um is greek yogurt better than regular yogurt greek yogurt is strained differently so that it it, ha it leaves more protein behind so you have a higher protein level in greek yogurt than in what you know traditional strained yogurt so i like it i like the tartar flavor that's just a personal preference but if you a lot of people don't like that and so um you know you got to do you what i would recommend is plain yogurt and you add whatever additives you want to it do not buy sweetened or flavored yogurt it very rarely is healthy and you end up undoing the good of the probiotics in the yogurt um let's see uh repeat my probiotics so the probiotic that i use and again you do you is called garden of life um it is the 85 billion women's raw that's it garden of life 85 million um 85 billion raw. So um, I do not know, okay. Uh, so I have a whole blog on sugar cravings. If you wanna go check it out at galvestondiet.com. I have, we've done challenges that, to try to decrease sugar intake and cut the sugar addiction. Um, yoga and meditation has helped you, that's great. Um, if you're fasting, small window in the day, like eight hours. How do you get enough protein if you spice it out? I plan it. I know exactly when I break my fast, what I'm having. So for me, because I am, I'm a faster, I will typically have about 30 grams of, so my goal is 75 to 90 grams of protein per day. So I'll have 20 to 30 when I break my fast. I'll have an additional 10 with my snack. And then I will have another snack with about 10 and then I'll finish off the rest at dinner i mean does every day work out perfect like that of course not i'm human things get in the way but that kind of is my goal when i set up my intentions for the day of, of how i'm going to nourish my body um so one of, okay lots of questions about fasting and working out in the morning i fast and work out in the morning i am able to do a full hour workout of hit training with zero problems at 5 6 a.m and then go to work uh, drink lots of water and uh, eat at noon with no problem. Now, did I wake up overnight and do that? No, that is part of the reason why we talk about becoming fast adapted over time and giving your body weeks to adjust. And um, we teach you this in the Galveston diet. So by doing that, by slowly pushing my eating window out step by step in 15 minute increments over two to three days, I was able to become fast adapted and working out in the morning was not a problem as long as I took my time and gave myself weeks and weeks and weeks to become fasting adapted. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm reading questions. Okay, I do walking at home for an hour. Is that good exercise? I think that's fantastic exercise. Can you do Pilates instead of resistance workout? Well, it depends on what kind of Pilates you're doing. Remember, resistance just means that you are making your muscles work harder than just carrying your own body weight. Body weight workouts can be resistance training. Push-ups are resistance training. Squats, lunges, you know. 
um, our resistance training. So if your Pilates is of the type that you are making the muscles work hard, then that probably would qualify as a good resistance training. Um, let's see, I talked about fiber in the beginning of this discussion and um, hang on, I'm looking at questions here from Facebook. Thank you for talking about splitting protein throughout the day. Yeah, it's so important. I have a whole section in the Galveston Diet where I talk about hormones, and I talk about not only about estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone, but y'all forget insulin is a hormone, leptin is a hormone, ghrelin is a hormone, insulin is a hormone, and um, cortisol is a hormone. These are the hormones that control where and how we store fat and control our hunger and our satiety, and they're just as important as everything else. And they are totally driven by the quality of our food. Food, not the quantity of our food. So if you, um, so all of this information, I have tons of blogs at galvestondiet.com that you are welcome to go and check out. Um, if you um, want to take our inflammation quiz, we have that available. We also have our recipe. So tomorrow's my birthday. I'll be 54 tomorrow. And to celebrate, we have our, um, recipe collection on sale for like less than $10. And it's 170 recipes. So if you wanna go and check it out, it's a PDF that you download. Full disclosure, you're not gonna get a book delivered to your house, that would be cost prohibitive. Um, it's a PDF that you can download to your laptop, your phone, your iPad, or I tell people go send it to a local printer or, or home de office depot or something and let them print it out for you, but print it double-sided because it's 170 recipes, so it's a lot of pages. Um, so you are more than welcome to go and check that out. It's all just on the link in bio, the link to the sale. Um, it's 54% off to celebrate my 54th birthday. <laughs> um, your body seems to be adding food to which it's developed at a, at a weight, yeah. Um, dry skin help, welcome to, anybody else suffering from dry skin and perimenopause and menopause? Mine has dried out, like acne is gone. Um, however, I am itchy and dry, especially my back. So, um, I, I've heard about itchy ears, itchy knees, itchy scalp. Um, it is no freaking joke. So flaxseed, you know, having a diet rich in omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids can be helpful. You know, making sure you're using topical emollients and things to like hold moisture in the skin. Um, Let's see, how do you know if you have perimenopause? Well, thank you for asking. So um, there is not a great blood test to determine if you're in perimenopause. Why? Because our levels fluctuate so much throughout the day. And so the Australasian Menopause Society came up with a validated scoring system. And I took that scoring system and I turned it into a perimenopausal quiz. So basically you answer a series of questions and you grade your symptoms. And then based on that grade, it tells you the likelihood that your symptoms are related to perimenopause and then it it asks for your email and you can go into an email string that tells you a ton 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 of information about um if you're in perimenopause so that is not on the link in bio you can just google perimenopause quiz galveston diet that should take you there. It's also at the bottom of galvestondiet.com. If you scroll all the way to the bottom where the little words are, you'll see the perimenopausal quiz down there. It's pretty cool. Um, let's see. So everybody take a second and give me some likes. Double tap my face. If you're just joining me, I'm Dr. Mary Claire Haber. I just did a whole discussion about perimenop uh, perimenopause and menopause belly fat, why it happens, what it is, why it Sorry, why it's dangerous. I know, I think I froze there for a second. And things that you can do about it. I have several blogs about this topic at galvestondiet.com. You guys are more than welcome to go and check it out. We're almost at 100,000 likes. Oh my God, this is craziness. Um, God, we're gonna get there. Oh, thank you for the happy birthday wishes. It's tomorrow, I'll be 54. Um, is oat milk okay? It depends, you gotta read those labels, guys. A lot of these oat milks and almond milks have a lot of additives in them. So, you know, remember that almond milk and oat milk and these things are just water run through the grinds of this stuff. 
And a lot of times to make it palatable, they will add sugars, they'll add flavor and colorings and artificial things just to make it taste like something. And so you just have to be careful and really, really focus on reading the labels because what seems healthy might actually cause some inflammation in you. Um, the average age of menopause, thank you for that question, is 51. That is, you know, the average age that a woman's period will stop for one year, okay? Normal, under the normal curve, is 45 to 55, okay? Perimenopause begins seven to 10 years before that. So it is completely reasonable for a woman to begin having menopausal-like symptoms as early as 35. Do the math, seven to 10 years. So, in, so you cannot stop the shutdown of your ovaries. Um, there are things you can do to support hormone production to kind of prolong it, not not much. That's pretty much genetically preordained and some hard living. Um, and, or if you've surgically lost an ovary or both ovaries, you know, there are, um, there are things that you can do, but not, not super effective and not a whole lot. The older you are going through menopause, actually the healthier you are. Estrogen does some amazing things for our body. And I talk ad nauseum about this here on TikTok. So if you've not followed me, hi, I'm Dr. Mary Claire Haver, board certified OB-GYN menopause. I am a menopause maven. This is my jam. This is what I do, what I love talking about, normalizing the discussion around menopause and perimenopause, educating you guys as much as possible. And thank you, thank you, thank you all of you for following me, for liking me, for sharing my videos, for giving me almost 2 million followers. I can't even believe I'm saying that out loud on TikTok and, and um, giving me a voice and a platform in order to share more information and make you guys feel like you're not crazy. Um, today, we've been talking about this unbelievable change in body composition that happens with perimenopause. So if you are one of those people who is noticing that you are starting to gain fat around the abdomen where you have never had it before, can you give me a hello? Um, let me see some comments below. Have you noticed that you are suddenly having an increase of your abdomen where you've never had it before? Is that happening to you? Um, we know that a woman in perimenopause, this, will, this process of body composition change of increasing abdominal fat deposition will begin two years before your period stops. We'll start accelerating, okay? Absolutely, we'll start accelerating. There is a huge hormonal component to this. And the other thing that we can do to slow this down or possibly help reverse it, you cannot get away from nutrition. There's not a magic pill, but hormone replacement therapy can be helpful here, okay? And I'm talking about estrogen, not testosterone. Estrogen has been shown to be helpful, okay? Um, so, one, I do prescribe testosterone. I only prescribe it for um, decreased sex, hypoactive sexual desire disorder in a, post, in a menopausal woman. Um, it's modest at best treatment strategy. What it can do is increase visceral fat deposition. So I always warn my patients about that. If you're starting to notice this, you know, we can combat some of the, a lot of this with the right nutrition, with an anti-inflammatory nutritional profile, with making sure you're getting enough fiber and all the things. But if no matter what you're doing, we're seeing more visceral fat deposition, we're going to have to think about something else for the treatment of your desire away from testosterone. I know that a lot of docs are quoting studies about decreasing um, belly fat. That's in men. That has not been shown to be in women. It actually increases it in women. So, um, so if you're looking for more information, if you're looking for, you know, a lot, we have tons of free info. We have blogs. We have quizzes. Uh, you know, my goal here is to educate. I do sell some supplements. I do sell a nutritional program. You are welcome to check that out at full disclosure. You know, it's how I pay the bills now. I also have a menopause clinic outside of Houston. If you want to make an appointment to come and see me, you have to be in person. Um, I am, <laughs> hello, Coloradans. I have a house in Colorado. I am getting my medical license to practice there and hope to have a small clinic there very, very soon. So, um, so many of you are wanting to come see me. I have patients fly to come and see me, which is crazy to me, or I love it because I love my patients, but I'm like, I gotta train some docs how to do what I do and help these women. Um, so what does an anti-inflammatory diet plan look like? Go check it out. I have a free five-day meal plan. 
that you can go and see. It's basically rich in antioxidants and natural anti-inflammatories. It's rich in anthocyanins. It's rich in fruits and veggies. It's low in processed foods. It's it's high in fiber. It's high in antioxidants. I mean, that that's what it is. It's not magic. Very, very low in processed foods. Very, very low in, we have a, a beneficial saturated to unsaturated fat ratio. I mean, there's a lot of components to it. So, um, Let's see, thank you for the follows. Yes, come to, oh, hi from Baton Rouge. I will be there this weekend for bid day. My daughter's going through recruitment uh, starting tomorrow. So is your diet plan good for a 20 year old? So in that Galveston diet, we have Galveston Prime. This is a nutrition program, not for the menopausal woman. This is for the younger woman. The meal plans are for like eating for one. Our meal plans in Galveston diet, we know that most of you have families. So that's like eating for four or making eight servings. Galveston Prime is similar um, principles, but really designed for younger, and it's only $19 one-time fee. So if you wanna go and check that out, it's at galvestondiet.com. Just scroll to the bottom to Galveston Prime. It was created by my daughter, who's a nutrition science major, and Ashley Simon, who has a double degree in sociology and biology, and she's actually in PA school right now. So they got together and kind of craft, took the Galveston diet and modified it for the younger person. And for a $19 fee, it's great. There's videos, there's um, meal plans, all kind of great stuff for you. So um, you can go and check that out. Let's see. Um, oh, so many of you are checking out the site right now. That's awesome. Uh, so yeah, we have the free meal plan. We have quizzes. Lots and lots of stuff. Also, our recipe collection is on sale, and you'll see that at the link in bio as well. Um, all right, Facebook, what kind of questions are you guys having right now? Um, do I recommend calcium supplement? I prefer to get my calcium from food. Calcium supplements cause some gastrointestinal like constipation issues for me. Um, I try to get my, you know I try to get all my nutrition from food, but I do supplement a few gaps that I typically have. So I do not supplement with calcium. Uh, bone density test and what age? Great question. So if you have no, if you're not high risk, insurance will typically not cover it till 64. Now, if you have a family history or, you know, there are several things that will make you at high risk, certain disease states, certain nutritional states, then you can get it paid for for insurance earlier. I would, guys, I would get one um, and pay out of pocket if you can find an inexpensive one because they can also do your visceral fat on a DEXA scan. So that would be something that I would highly, highly, highly recommend. Um, Let's see, what's the difference between keto, that and keto with intermittent fasting? We are not keto. Keto, the way most people do ketosis, a ketotic program, program is weight loss at any cost. And if that's what you're looking for, if you just want skinny, this is not the right program for you. This is not the right, I'm not the right doctor for you. This is not anything that, you know, you may go in and out. Of, when you burn fat, you create ketones. So yes, you might be in ketosis from time to time. I hope you are if you're trying to lose weight and burn fat. That is a natural phenomenon, but that is not our goal. Our goal is health. And the way most people do a traditional keto program is very low in fiber, very high in saturated fat, and they have temporary weight loss. Most people cannot sustain the way that traditional keto is done. So we are not a keto program. I don't care if you're in ketosis. We don't pee on sticks. We don't do any of that. Sure, you might be in ketosis from time to time. It's a side effect of burning fat for fuel. We love that. That happens during fasting. But this is not the goal. The goal here is your health. The goal here is playing with your grandchildren without fear. The goal here is growing old and not having the ailments that your parents suffered from. The goal here is being able to lift that grandbaby, get off the floor without assistance, not have your mind disintegrate before you are ready. You know, it's not so much looking good in a bikini. That would be great, okay? But when we are in Galveston Diet, it is not about getting your 35-year-old bikini body back. It is about how are you going to age so that you can be as healthy as possible and live the life that you deserve as you get older. So um, do I recommend taking collagen? Yes, I do. I love, love, love collagen. So true story. Years ago, I am with my little girl, she's now an adult, and in the, I'm trying on bathing suits, and I'm like mm, in the mirror because of cellulite. Even the thinner, you know, as thin as I was back then, I had cellulite. Cellulite is no prettier hanging off of bone than it is with some muscle behind it. So 
Um, and I'm like, oh. and she's like, mommy, your cellulite doesn't look that bad. And I was like, oh my God, shoot me. So of course I start Googling cellulite. What can I do about it? And I, I go down the medical rabbit hole. I'm looking at all these research articles. And so I run across these articles about Verisol collagen, V-E-R-I-S-O-L, and how they did like laser measurements of wrinkle depth and actual caliper measurements of cellulite. And they did see improvement by ingesting this Verisol collagen. And I was like, I'll try it. So I'm like, where do I Google? Where do I get Verisol collagen? I ran across a company called Sparkle. So I start taking Sparkle. I start telling my friends about it. I start telling my patients about it. And I'm doing it just for vanity. I just want my wrinkles and cellulite to look better, okay? And it's a nice source of protein, so that's good. I don't have any joint pain. I'm not worried about any of that. So I'm taking it forever and ever, and I'm talking about it. My social media presence is growing. And then all of a sudden, the Sparkle people reach out, and they're like, could you tell us when you're going to make a Sparkle video? Because we are selling out. And I was like, what? And so... We had launched fiber and omega-3 and vitamin D, our two big supplements. And so we decided to like reach out to Sparkle and go, hey, can we sell your product on our website? You know, just make a little partnership. And the guy's like, yeah, you can put your label on it. Just let it still say Sparkle. So I now sell the collagen still from, I buy it from Sparkle at wholesale and then sell it for what they would sell it for. So it's on our supplement page. Again, it's link in bio or at our um Okay, and then the most exciting thing about collagen is that last year, turns out, it is good for osteoporosis. So now I have a medical reason, not just vanity. I feel so good. We do not ship to Europe. I'm sorry. Not yet. We're not that big yet, but maybe one day. Maybe one day. So, um, okay. Three thousand. I paid over three thousand dollars with diet plan supplement hormones at a wellness center, but didn't fix things. I'm so sorry, honey. That should that that's crazy. That I I'm I'm so sorry. Three thousand dollars, Lord. Okay. Um. Bless your heart. Uh. What's a good starter plan? The Galveston diet. It's my program. Check it out. Um. Let's see. We do have a Galveston diet book. It is not coming out until January. It is being published by Random House Publishers, and um. But right now, the program is all online. Um, we have videos, we have written resources, we have seven weeks of meal plans, we have two weeks of vegetarian options, we have a money back guarantee over seven days if you're not happy with it. If you decide that it's not for you, um, you can go and check it out at galvestondiet.com. So, um, let's see, everybody double tap the screen real quick, tap my face, just take your finger and tap my face to give us the likes and then um, Facebook go ahead and give me some likes on this video or put some comments let me get to some questions here do I recommend CoQ10 with a statin oh buy your plan you won't regret it thank you just got it curious what you would recommend women diagnosed with osteoporosis are there any natural options so glad you asked if you just missed what I said it is there are there is a study that has shown that and you can google it um, that bioactive collagen peptide supplementation has been shown to reverse osteoporosis in women. So I would definitely add that to your armamentarium. Um, sorry, just something fell on the floor. I was throwing it away. Uh, 120,000 likes. Oh my God, you guys. Uh, what about belly gain? Yeah, that was the whole point of this talk at the beginning. So I am going to download this video. It will be on Facebook. I am simultaneously recording it on my Facebook page and on TikTok. TikTok will allow, it won't save, it won't, y'all can't see it again, but I will download it and I will put it on my YouTube page. So you will be able to see this again. Um, thank you for following me. Thank you for the shares. Thank you for the likes. Thank you for all the support. It's hard out there. So let's do, um, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Facebook. Let's see how many we've had, uh, We've got 1,300 people watching, so go ahead and pop some comments in the questions. And um, does taking testosterone increase estrogen levels? So testosterone is converted to estrone in the fat cells. So if you have excess, excessive testosterone and then you are having, uh, you have a lot of fat, you absolutely can convert um, that to estrone, which is a the fat you know, uh, hormone, not estradiol, estrone. It's not as bioactive as estriol, but it absolutely can happen. 
Um, I'm so glad I found you. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Y'all are so sweet. Um, okay. So, will HRT aid in maintaining your weight or losing if you are trying to lose, be healthy. It can only be helpful. It's not a miracle cure. You cannot go on HRT and expect to not have to change your diet and exercise um, and nutritional profile in order to change your body composition back to something that you're happy with. You have to do all of it. So HRT though can aid in that process. Um, let's see, there's so many questions and they're literally flying by, flying by, okay. Um, Gosh, thank you for all of the likes, guys. So, um, fat all over, mood swings, night sweats. I'm so sorry. This is not keto at all. No, it's not. Um, fat, high cholesterol, have done dieting, nothing works. Check out Galveston Diet. I really, really think that this is something really new and exciting, and it's very powerfully anti you know, really fights inflammation and loads your body up with, with things that will help keep you so healthy. Yes, we have grocery lists for all of our meal plans, so we try to make it as easy as possible. Um, let's see. Okay, so, um, hang on, I'm going to end the Facebook video. All right, guys, if you are on TikTok, you can do something called a power tap, a power light. So you just tap a whole bunch, and then you'll, you just tap, like, boom, 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 tap my face, tap my face, tap my face, and then you will see a um, heart pop up under my face, under my name, and then it'll slide to the end, and you get this shower of hearts. But um, what type of estrogen... They did a hormone panel, everything is fine. There's no great way, you, no blood test is gonna diagnose perimenopause, very rarely. Um, this is a diagnosis of exclusion, so you have to rule out hypothyroidism and other conditions, and there's basically, you have to listen to the patient and realize that her constellation of symptoms is related to perimenopause, then discuss treatment options. Thank you so much for the gifts, thank you for the hearts, thank you for all of the things. Um, okay, I'm looking for questions. Go for the gold. Okay. All right. So, um, are you in Galveston? I live in Galveston, Texas. I work in Friendswood, about 30 minutes away, closer to Houston. That's um, where we... Um, where I have my office. And you can learn more about it at our website at galvestondiet.com or just go up here to Dr. Mary Claire and check out the link that's there in the bio. Um, okay, and now in the link in bio, we have several resources for you I want you to check out. We have the inflammation quiz, absolutely free, basically gives you, um, hang on, let me go to this, okay. Uh, the inflammation quiz is amazing. It basically grade, gives you a, a grade based on the last 24 hours, like what you ate over the last 24 hours. Um, so we're also having a sale on Savor It, which is our recipe collection, 170 recipes. You can go and check that out. My favorite nutrition tracker is there called Chronometer. We do have a partnership with them. So I make like a dollar if you get the paid version, but you can absolutely do the free version. Um, I like this app because it is has a really clean database. I know that when you're clicking on a food that the nutrition information there is absolutely accurate. Um, we also have a doctor referral network. So this is crowdsourced. This is people like you who've had a wonderful, beautiful ob -gen menopausal experience and they wanted to share their provider with you. It is very hard. Thank you for the pancake. That was really sweet. Um, there, It is hard to find a good doctor. I know. I was not a good doctor for a long time. I didn't know how to treat menopause. I had to like go back to school and learn. So I was like, look, people are begging me for doctors. Thank you for the roses. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, the doctor referral network is, um, if you click on that button, then um, that will take you, these, I've only verified that they are actual physicians with an office, but the reviews are from followers just like you who had great doctors and the list is growing every single day. So if you want to go check that out, if you want to come and see me in Friendswood, you are more than welcome. There is a link there. There's also a link to our supplement page. 
um, and our Fab Four blog. So Fab Four blog is what got me really going on TikTok. It was my most viral video where I talked about four nutrients to track. Many of you who are watching me have seen it. That blog is linked there. It's also, I was um, featured in Women's World Magazine in the grocery store today, this week, and this was what they were talking about was the Fab Four Challenge. Um, I do not, I don't love virtual consultations. I try to avoid them. I only do them in very special circumstances and they must be in the state of Texas. I am only licensed to practice medicine in Texas. So I cannot see a patient who is not physically in the state of Texas at the time of the visit. So thank you, thank you, thank you everyone for liking and sharing and for the roses. Uh, Nutrafol, I think it's a waste of money. I think you can just go to Walmart and get some vitamins and have the same results. Uh, I would not spend that much money on, on a vitamin. Um, I have a whole blog and YouTube video. I have a great YouTube video on hair thinning. It takes about an hour because I go through multiple treatment options and what is available and why the hair is thinning for most people. But that is on my YouTube channel, um, which if you go up to Dr. Mary Claire or to my TikTok page, I think there's a link to YouTube there as well. Um, how do you get to your sales page? Just go to gallisondiet.com. That's the easiest way. Um, or the link in bio. So link in bio, for those of you who are my age and don't know what all this stuff is, if you just click up here where it says Dr. Mary Claire, there, on my phone it's up here, a little picture, that will take you to my TikTok page. At the top of the TikTok page, there is um, a bolded link that says blah, 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 Galveston Diet, link in bio. Click on that. That will give you fingertip access to a ton of blogs free, to our quizzes, to our resources, to the diet if you want to learn about that. It's great. Uh, the diet, the easiest place to find if you want to see the diet is galsondiet.com. Um, <clears throat> let's see. And a lot of y'all are checking it out right now. That's pretty cool. All right. Um, your B12, let's see. Uh, you had a hysterectomy nine weeks ago. Your OB is amazing and your daughter loves her. Please refer them. Please, please, please. If you're getting great menopause care, please, same link for the doctor referral. You can refer a physician that you love to the same exact link. Guys, we're almost at 200,000 uh, likes. Thank you so, 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 so much. Um, what do I think about Provitalize? I don't know anything about them. They sound, that sounds like an MFM, M and MLM. Um, Yes, my plan has recommendations for people over 65. Of course, we have postmenopausal recommendations. Absolutely. No links on my Tic Tac bio. Really? We got a bunch. No, link in bio. We have 78 people on the link in bio right now. Click in on there. Go try again. Just click it or maybe something. Or you can just go to galvisondie.com. Everything's on there as well. You just have to look around for it a little bit more. Um, Thank you need a referral for Northwest Indiana. Whoa. Okay. Uh, it could be their settings. Okay. Um, all right, guys. I have been on this for, I think, almost an hour, and my battery's about to die. So thank you so much. Everybody on your way out, give me 10 likes. Tap my face 10 times. Follow me and share this video. I am so honored that you took the time out to listen to me tonight. I will be reposting this to YouTube. It is on Facebook at the Galveston Diet Facebook page. Um, it is there. Let me make sure I'm not lying to you. Uh, I return home. Okay. Yeah, it should be up right now. It should be on the Facebook page. And I went over how you can decrease menopausal belly fat with nutrition, what I recommend, possible supplements, why this happens, all of that information was there. All right, everybody, have a great night.